Hello everyone. I just wanted to talk here about the beginning of homework three on seam carving. So in class we've been talking about the edit distance as an example of a recursive problem that can be tackled with bottom-up dynamic programming. Um, and now I'm going to start to throw other problems your way that can be solved in a similar way. And one of them is seam carving. So the idea here is we have an image and we want to change the size, we want to shrink it. Um, but if we say want to make it thinner and we do that uniformly across the x-axis, that will resize important details the same as it will resize unimportant details in the background, like the fact that this, this wall here is kind of a constant color. So instead what we can do is try to remove the regions of the wall while preserving the detail of the paintings and other objects in the foreground. And the way we do that is we find these things called seams, which are the path are paths from the top of the image to the bottom of the image that minimize the sum of some kind of measurement of importance along the path. So you see here that this kind of cuts through a lot of regions that are not very noticeably different from the regions around them. So if we remove them, we wouldn't really be destroying much detail. The way we measure that is by something that I give you, something called the gradient magnitude, which is kind of like a measurement of an edge. So this, this thing will light up if we're around edges. So that we'll be going from background to foreground or from one foreground object to another. We don't want to remove those pixels because those are going to be part of more important detail. So we're going to try to trace a path from the top to the bottom that tries to stay through the, the darkest regions that it can. And then we'll remove that entire seam from the image. So there's exactly one pixel per row in the seam. Exactly one pixel per row. And so what that means is we can remove the entire seam and decrease the width by exactly one pixel. And then we can continue to do that. And we will gradually resize this image down. And later on in the assignment, I show you how to, you can actually insist that certain regions of the seam um, are low energy. So I could say, well, everything in this mask here, let me consider that to be an energy zero, regardless of what it actually was. And, and that's a way to get it to remove things from the image. So I can say, okay, I'm gonna insist that my seams go through there until I've run out of pixels there and then they'll find other things. If you know, you go take this a little bit further, you could actually remove horizontal seams as well, so you could remove her shadow there. But you know, this is already pretty convincing, right? You have no idea that she was really there except for the shadow. Okay, so the challenge in this assignment, the, the primary challenge and, and, the, and the first part that I want you to do is to compute these seams, compute the seam. So, so choosing one column for every row um, from top to bottom that minimizes the sum of these energies along the seam. Now the seam can't just jump willy nilly all over the place. It has this continuity. So in particular, what we say is the seam, as it goes, it can move to the right, it can go down, or it can move to the left. So I'm at a particular place. The, the seam can branch out in three different directions. It, it, can, it can go left, down, or right. And so what we can do is, is we can think of this um, as a recursive subproblem. So I can ask you the question, OK, Let's suppose that I said uh, that I had a particular seam that started somewhere at the top and that it ended at this pixel location ij. So I could say that that is a subproblem. So the seam will end at that pixel, and I'm going to compute the minimum cost seam. So the sum of the energies over all possible seams I could make starting at the top and ending at this particular pixel. That's a subproblem, so subproblem ij. And let's say maybe I computed all the subproblems up to a particular row. And so now what I want you to tell me is, okay, if I computed all the subproblems, so the minimum cost seams to every one of these pixels from the top, can you use the solutions to those subproblems 
to devise a solution to the subproblems in the next row. So the first deadline before class on Monday, um, I want you to tell me what the dynamic programming rules would be. So if we call this image C for cost of theme or accumulated cost of, of energy down to a particular point from the top. So if we call the cost of this Cij, and then we call the cost of this Cij plus one and Cij plus two, or this one Cij minus one, can you tell me the solution to Cij in terms of other subproblems? Given the fact that I know the seam can only move to the right, directly down or left, which subproblems do I have to look at to tell you the solution to this seam? That's what I want you to think about. So I want you to tell me, how do I compute Cij in terms of smaller subproblems? So seams that end sooner. And my hint is you should look at the row right above and, and some of the subproblems there will be relevant. And then the second question is, what is the base case? Because that's the other thing we need. We need to start somewhere. We're going to do this from the bottom up. Um, where do we start? And, and what is the base case there? So being mindful of the fact that we also have this parallel array. So we're creating this array C for, for accumulated cost. We have a parallel array called E, which is this image. And we're going to use this image to help compute the seam. So your final answer here should be in terms of the accumulated cost subproblems and also the energy at this pixel. So that's my hint. So I'm going to have you try this. Um, if you don't get it, okay, fine. It's only five points. I'll give you the answer so that you can keep going and you can actually code this up like a dynamic programming problem. So you'll loop, you know, one by one, row by row, and you'll build up the solutions. And then like we were doing in class with edit distance, distance eventually you'll be able to not only tell me the optimal cost to a particular um, pixel of, of the seam that could go there, but, but then you'll remember which direction it came from so you can actually trace it back and tell me what, where the seam actually was. Because at the end of the day, I don't care too much about the cost. I actually want the seam itself that achieves the minimum energy. So, so that's, all, that's great. That's already a huge, huge step. Um, and then you can actually remove the seams. That's another task. From the image um, and then you'll add this masking thing and then I have an art contest a mandatory art contest but five points really anything that you do here is, <laughs> is fine you can do goofy things like take my face and remove seams from it and probably shouldn't have removed those seams but <laughs> it looks a little weird but uh, that's an artistic effect that you can get so you can hear my partners laughing in the background because it looks so silly all right um, yeah, so that's it. So, so this is the assignment. And I, but I want you, now that we've talked about a problem in detail and I've shown you how to, how to assemble it from its subproblems, I want you to tell me how to assemble this from its subproblems. If I knew the best seams that could come to the row above this and what they costed, tell me the, the best seam that could come into here. All right, so give me that shot. Um, and I'll, I'll tell you very quickly on Monday um, what the, what the actual answer was, even if you couldn't completely get it yourself. But I want you to try. It's a good thing to think about. Okay, so good luck.